okay here uh, while performing the pile cap design uh, once the uh, column is designed and when the footing is designed the program will uh, program will calculate the pile reactions and what exactly for the design purpose the program is uh, considering the maximum pile reactions uh, <coughs> to to design the pile for footing so based on engineering judgment the designer can assign uh, a different pile reaction uh, under uh, in footing tab uh, and the program will uh, cross check all the information based on that or will design the uh, footing based on the new pile reactions uh, so in this case uh, if the if the program uh, tests the pile with with the calculated pile reaction the program will show the particular combination which has been selected uh, for the design of the pile cap so if the user uh, assigns the uh, the pile reaction its own pile reaction the program will show uh, will will change the load combination from from a number to u u means user defined so u means user defined uh, pile reaction and the thing design will run based on the user defined uh, pile reaction which can be factored as well as service so in the next slide uh, so how to cross verify uh, how to cross verify the the loads in the column design uh, from the analysis tab or, or from the load combination so how do we how do we verify this uh, first we have to identify the member and the node number listed on the this analysis tab uh, so there is an option called filter uh, we need to click on the filter option uh, and uh, and filter filter to the node one uh, where we have to check this uh, vertical vertical load which is a fi load so under the analysis parameter uh, over here uh, we can check the back uh, applied to the truck uh, which is 1.33 in this case uh, and uh, in the load combination dialog box uh, based on the type of combination which uh, which is seen uh, under the column design which is 74 uh, the user can note down uh, the load cases uh, the load factors and other information and they can get the uh, the values the fi values from the analysis tab and multiply with the corresponding Uh, load factors to get the final uh, PU load or the final vertical load. So this is how user can cross verify uh, the the values shown in the column design or footing design or or the pier cap design uh, using using the information from the analysis tab uh, at the load completion dialog box. So for hammered uh, eta factors, uh, how to change how how to change the eta factors as per ASTO LRFT Article One Point Three Point Two One. so these are basically load modifier load modifier factors you know, related to ductility redundancy and operational classification uh, user defined eta multipliers is available uh, over here uh, by editing the combination directly in the combination uh, dialog box the user can uh, input the uh, eta eta multipliers for each combination separately or or or, or in one single shot the user can uh, input the eta multipliers to the custom um, uh, load combination for the custom load group a uh, load group uh, under under uh, under load group library and then save that information and they can use that information uh, for the further analysis and design so uh, there is uh, uh, this is a general issue not related to hammerhead it can, it can it can happen to any any type of uh, substructure so how do i address the message dependent load cases are not equally number uh, so internally uh, for some of the load cases uh, uh, in rcpr uh there there is a dependency between a uh, few load cases for example live load as a dependency with the braking and uh, centrifugal force mm. so if the if the number of uh, live load uh, cases is different from the braking force case and the c uh, load case the program will show an uh, error message saying that the dependent load cases mm, are not the same and uh, either that we have to copy uh, have to add a new uh, load case for the braking force uh, or or the centrifugal force so or the other other solution would be uh, to when you are generating the live load the user can uh, generate the live load along with the braking load and the centrifugal force load and click on generate button and the program will uh, equally uh, generate the live braking force and centrifugal force load cases uh, and and also apart from apart from having same dependent load cases user can uh, break that uh, dependency as well uh, so we have a wiki article for that uh, showing how how the dependency can be uh, broken uh, in the load combination dialog box so elevation uh, when the user applies a uh, wind load on structure 
So generally, they get a what you said, say that uh, the minimum elevation input allowed is the elevation at bottom of the uh, the pier column. Uh, so generally, what happens? Uh, this message is issued when the wind load uh, cannot be cannot be applied or cannot act below the bottom of the column. So uh, to calculate the elevation, uh, the right elevation at the bottom of the column, the user has to subtract uh, the structural depth, which is basically the combination of column and the pier cap minus the the top uh, elevation of the pier cap. As you can see here, uh, 66.6 feet, which is 93.3 minus 26.7. 26.7 is basically the total height of column and the pier cap minus the top elevation of the uh, the pier cap. So you get 66.0 feet, and that information needs to be added uh, in the auto load generation wind on structure dialog box. Then then the warning message will go away. Uh, regarding drill shaft, uh, there's a possibility uh, the user can uh, model drill shaft uh, due to space uh, issues or some other issue. Uh, so what is the role of point of fixity uh, under drill shaft? Uh, so, so we are showing this arrow mark uh, where, where the point of fixity is shown. So basically this point of fixity uh, will be defined, uh, will define the depth of the drill shaft. So depth of the drill shaft that will be treated as a column uh, during analysis and design. Uh, so, so that's basically the drill shaft which is above the soil so that that particular portion of the drill shaft will be analyzed and designed as a column uh, will be part of the frame as well so under the column design auto design of shaft will be done from point of fixity up to the bottom of the column so under column design which is over here the auto design of the shaft will be done from the point of fixity uh, to the bottom of the column so up to, up to this portion so the remaining portion is actually below the so, so that, that portion, we are not designing it. So in the next slide, so here uh, in the next slide, uh, the custom load combination, um, uh, which is basically uh, the library wherein, wherein the user can create his own custom load combination as per his project requirement and can be saved uh, in a particular path, in the library path. So whatever custom load com uh, custom load combination the user has created, the same information will be seen under available groups in the loads tab. Uh, they, but the, uh, if the if the user needs to have full control on the library path, if not, the program will show uh, keep on showing um, warning message saying that the uh, the custom uh, custom load group is not saved. Uh, so the the user has to get a mighty permission uh, to uh, so that he has complete control on the on, on the library. So you click on three button, uh, three dot button over there, and the program will automatically take to that particular library setup path uh, where the custom load group is uh, saved. Um, as I said here, the library location can be found under the preferences main library path. Uh, user has to press the uh, button with three dots, and it will directly take the user to that particular uh, uh, particular folder. So. Uh, so, uh, so when when we open the uh, so when we open the file, there are many times we have seen uh, this particular uh, message saying that properties for default combinations are different than the ones in the library. So when we, this uh, particular warning message comes, the user has to click S button. Why they have to click S button? This message is issued mainly when the when opening the model. Say in the older version of the program, if the if the model is saved in the older version of the proper program, and if they open in the new version. Then the user generally sees this particular warning message. The reason being that uh, uh, the uh, there might be an updated as to combination factors or a change due to bug fixes uh, in a new release of the program. Uh, then the user will show this warning message, and we have to click yes, and the program will automatically update the uh, load groups. The message uh, recommends updating the load group factors used in the model uh, using current library settings. So everything will be as per the latest uh, combination factors. So it's always advisable for the users to click uh, the yes button. So in the next uh, next slide, um, so uh, so this is a case uh, wherein uh, wherein for the self weight of the structure, uh, we have we have got this uh, particular uh, query from the users many times. Uh, so whether the user has to select the self weight of the substructure uh, separately. Mm -hmm. to user has to generate the self weight substructure separately in the lower step. The answer is required only for the Texas uh, uh, state uh, specification option if the Texas state specification option is selected. Uh, for the remaining uh, states, um, the self weight is actually part of the combination, so it is not required for the user to 
the program will generally will not show the sulfate load case if the different state specification option is selected. Uh, the the program automatically for other spe other state specification than Texas the program automatically is generating the sulfate but will not show and uh, will not show it under combinations. The the user uh, can see this information in the analysis tab, uh, wherein wherein the user will show all the relevant forces uh, under self, uh, which is part of the uh, DC load case. Uh, check uh, sulfate uh, analysis. Uh, self uh, under analysis load case, uh, that's what I have uh, mentioned here. The user can check the sulfate information in the analysis tab. It's only for the Texas, the user has to select a, a separate uh, sulfate option is shown uh, under load type uh, that needs to be selected if the program will not run the analysis. So, uh, the final uh, slide uh, how to import uh, the load from superstructure? Uh, yes, it, it is possible to import the load from superstructure, or the user can generate the uh, uh, load reactions in the substructure itself. Uh, the user, the substructure can import the dead load, live load reactions from superstructure. For that, the user has to run the sub superstructure analysis and update the Lee Bridge concrete model. Then, uh, under DC generation, the user has to click on this radio button which says read a uh, composite dead load reaction from superstructure uh, uh, action from superstructure user has to click on the read button uh, the the peer gets selected uh, and if the user clicks on generate uh, all the dead load will be uh, imported from superstructure similarly for the live load mm, the user has to uh, so click on this radio button read superstructure reaction if the user clicks on read uh, then the truck load and the lane load reaction will be populated here and if the user clicks on generate, the program will generate the uh, uh, live load reactions from the bearing and will generate multiple load cases and as the program moves the uh, truck from left to right. Thanks for watching. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like and share it with others. If you want to see more like it, please consider subscribing to this and Bentley's other channels. Thank you and see you next time.